Hello and welcome back to In the Wall with me, Parker Kligerman. We have missed you, and I know it's been a while since we last saw each other here, but I've been busy, of course. You can always write into the show using hashtag In the Wall on Twitter, Instagram, or in the comments on YouTube. That's how you guys drive this show. So why have I been so busy? What have I been up to? Well, since you last saw me here on In the Wall, I've driven to Watkins Glen. There it is, out there somewhere in New York. Uh, I commented on an Xfinity practice from the booth there with Dave Burns and Mike Bagley. Good times. Uh, I also raced at Watkins Glen in the Cup Series. Got spun out by Daniel Suarez, finished sixth. Eh, pretty good day. Um, then I turned 29 years old. Yes, I know, I'm old. Thanks for reminding me, everyone back in the, the deal. Uh, called a race from the booth at Mid-Ohio for the first time. That was fun, did it before 30. Pretty proud of that, thanks. Uh, after that race, I traveled to Michigan. There it is, Michigan Speedway, it's out there. Yeah, you know. While I was there, though, I saved a cameraman, Jordy, after he fell off this pylon we were standing on. That was pretty cool. I felt good about myself. Great deed, right? And I saw the movie Art of Racing in the Rain, which is the saddest movie I've ever seen in my life. I raced trucks at Bristol. Pretty disappointing. Finished 13th, got the right side tore off. And I pit reported at Bristol, where I look like I'm trying to eat my friend Landing Castle or something. It's very odd. Uh, obviously, you guys have also missed me. So let's go through some of the comments you left out there in the social universe of, you know, the ways that you miss me and uh, what you're thinking of me. So our producers have come up with a couple here. Um, well, that's Twitter, and there's no comment. Wow. You know what? That, that must have been a mistake. Here on YouTube, yep. There, well, there's no comment there either. So, okay, apparently no one knows we were gone there. Reddit, oh, come on, Reddit? You didn't even notice we were gone? We put you guys on the show every time. It's, okay, I get the point. No one wrote in, no one noticed we were gone. But you know what? I don't care, because we're gonna continue doing this whether you watch or notice we're here or not, but always use the hashtag in the wall if you would like to write in and notice we exist or something. You know who also has been busy? Kyle Larson, I know, shocking. He won two races last night while most drivers are off on vacation. He won midget and sprint car features at Placerville Speedway in Northern California. That is the first of four nights of racing in his home state this week. That guy is incredible. What a racer. Uh, and you know what? Finally, a first look of the 2021 Full One car in the wind tunnel. This is a 50% model of the car being tested at Sauber's wind tunnel in Switzerland. This is F1's aim at creating better racing by reducing the car's wake of disruption through the air. The model also has the new 18-inch wheels, a change from the 13-inch wheels currently being used. And a little birdie has told me something similar may be coming towards NASCAR. I think it's a great-looking car. It's going to be awesome if it races as well as they hope. You know what? And then there's this. And then there's also this. Now for the mailbag section. Yes, we do need you guys in this show. In the great words of Ashanti and Ja Rule, I'm not always there when you call, but I'm always on time. No idea what that means. Who is writing this? But here are some questions that we got from the internet by people using hashtag in the wall. We start on YouTube with a name that I'm not gonna say. Do you think that NASCAR should have more night races or races during midweek? I don't think we should have more night races, but we should have more midweek races. I'd love to see that in the Cup Series. I have a feeling that it is coming, uh, but that will probably have to run at night, so you'll get more night races. All right, 
On to number two. This is from Twitter, Patty L Cubed. Hashtag in the wall. That be clicking was honestly a cool show. Oh, thanks. And just going to say it, stage points are great for NASCAR, but the actual stage racing is getting annoying. Why not merge the old and the new together with points given out at the current stage rakes but without a caution? Great question, and I've seen this one brought up a lot, but the point is they're handing out points, right? They're handing out something that affects the championship. It's better to have a predefined time when that happens, and if there is an issue about where the cars are running, if there's a caution that comes out, NASCAR goes to video just like the end of a race, not just timing and scoring loops. Therefore, I think having a yellow helps keep that pretty clean because, once again, you're handing out points, which are so valuable. All right, question number three. From Twitter, the Brian Mullen, also known as Real Brian Mullen. Wow, didn't know it was you. Did you already have Logan and Ashton in your mind going into the iRacing Peak Series draft? Uh, we definitely did have Logan and Ashton, and we'll see what happens going into 2020. Uh, all right, question number four from Twitter. This is from Wraith Dog, Dog Pound Inc. Uh, at Pete Kligerman, here's one for hashtag in the wall. We know NASCAR has peak and F1 has its deal. I'm assuming he means esports. World of Outlaws and Dirt Late models have the same. What's the na next major motorsports series to get its e motorsports counterpart? IMSA or IndyCar? Well, I think we've already seen V8 Supercars is starting one. And I believe, and from what I hear, IndyCar is not far behind. And guess what? They need it because all motorsports need to connect. To esports in the future. All right, another question from Instagram, and this is from Ford Martin TV. I know this guy. He was my spotter last year. You can also hear him on the radio at times. How do you get your hair to stay in the same spot all day at the track? I've failed. Well, pretty easy answer. Get better hair, Ford. Sorry, bud. I was born with this one. Basically, I, like, who's it says that I woke up like this? I was born like this. Thanks. And moving on to the world of IndyCar. Recently, I read a book. I know, shocking. The book was called Black Noon by Art Garner and it is about one of the darkest days in Indy 500 history. I can't recommend it enough. It is one of the greatest motorsport books I have ever read. But the reason for bringing it up is it offers a stark reminder in the wake of IndyCar's recent foray and consistent issues at Pocono Raceway. In the book, you follow numerous drivers who are the stars of their day and even a couple of legends. And as two of the drivers were rumbling towards their last race moment and breath. The race was the 1964 Indy 500. It would be the first time the Indy 500 was stopped after a massive, fiery seven-car wreck. It killed Eddie Sachs, a superstar at the time, and a star in the making, Dave McDonald. The race was eventually restarted, and none other than A.J. Foyt would go on to win. But before it was restarted, another legend by the name of Jim Clark was with his crewmen who were all visibly shooken up from the wreck where he would remark, don't look so worried, it's only a sport. <laughs> As we all watched a very scary wreck occur this past Sunday into turn two at Pocono, there was a massive outcry around the racing world asking why does IndyCar choose to race there? Just a couple years ago, Justin Wilson lost his life there. Last year, Robert Wickens was very seriously injured and is still fighting to recover from those injuries. I will admit, I have asked the same question. I have lamented IndyCar's decision to race at these massive, super fast ovals outside the Indy 500. I've joined others in pointing out that with the lack of fans in the grandstands and the lack of people watching on TV, the risk doesn't seem to match the reward. With that said, I love reading about racing history because it always offers a reminder that since we first invented these things called automobiles, we have raced them and that racers are a different breed. We don't race because we enjoy the danger. We also don't not race because it's dangerous. It's an accepted reality by any driver who has reached the top levels of this sport. Although all have different ways of how to deal with it, the danger is ingrained in the DNA of the sport. The tragedy that occurred in 1964 sparked a series of sweeping rule changes all centered around safety. And this has occurred almost every decade since in all forms of motorsports. Because that's what racing was. For decades, it was a testbed for the automotive industry and in pushing the boundaries of what was possible as a human race. We learned ways to make it safer. Racing has made road cars more efficient and helped educate us on how to protect the human being between the seat and the steering wheel. But lately, that is not the case. We are living in a time when all motorsports are struggling to stay in line with the history that brought them to their current prominence. 
No, we are no longer truly developing much of anything. Racing is more entertainment, more a show than an automotive test bed. So it begs the question, if we are not pushing the boundaries for a greater good, what's the point? Well, I'd say it's the same reason we race at Talladega and Daytona in NASCAR. It's the same reason Formula One goes to Monza and Monaco. The point is, if we are not connecting with what built this sport in terms of the show or technological advancement, then it's where we race and it's the fact that we choose to race that will define this sport. I will completely understand if IndyCar takes Pocono off their schedule, but with more people in the stands and higher TV ratings this past weekend, I'll also understand if they keep it on the schedule. I don't envy their position, but will respect them either way. I would think there are drivers who feel the same way. After all, just like the drivers in 1964, they are choosing to race because that is what racers do. I leave you with a short poem that was left on the pit wall of the Indianapolis Motor Speedway the day after that tragic 1964 Indy 500. It goes like this. To Davey, I know a speedway in the sky where brave young drivers thunder by. And all who live this racing game must know fate may call their name.